hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. I am here at one of my many studio spots in my house at the dining room table. Um, I have a lot of them. Um, but I'm here in the dining room on this very, very rainy Wednesday in Franklin, Tennessee. And I thought I would just share with you all some tips and techniques for the Waking Up Gray subscription box. So in your first box, you received some of these beauties. Look at these. These are Rembrandt sticks. See? See there? Rembrandt sticks. They're really velvety, smooth, somewhat soft, but pretty compressed uh, pastels. They're powdery, they're chalky, they're not the oils. They're, they're not oils, they're pastels. Uh, and they're super fun to work with. So I'm gonna show you a few little things to get you started. Um, so the first box, you received some of these. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you what's in the second box until those people that are anticipating and receiving a second box receive it. They're en route right now. If you're waiting on your second box, it's on its way to you as I speak on Wednesday, June 2nd. So I'm not ready to share with you what's in that box. Suffice it to say that the first month I gave you some media in the second month, you'll have some ground to work with that media. So I wanted to show you a few different things and you can make this your own. I'm just gonna kind of show you um, tips and techniques. So nothing's really finished, but um, you kind of get in some insight into maybe how, how to use some of this. So I'm gonna be working from this. It is a handmade paper journal that I made and I am probably three quarters of the way through this. Now what you need to know about this is that the paper that I use for journals is a mixed media paper. Hey, who's there? I can't see you. Hang on. Let's see. Whoops. I don't know what I just did. Um, okay. I'm new at this, bear with me. I'm just kind of flying. Anyway, um, so this is the journal that we're gonna be working from and I'm gonna switch back and forth. I, I need to turn the, the video down so you can see what I'm doing down here. But um, let's see. Um, so I'm gonna turn to the blank page. What I was saying was that the paper that I use is mixed media. So it receives wet media as well as dry. So it's great to experiment with. And what I want you to understand is that these journals are safe places for you to be able to experiment and try things out. Some things will work great and most things won't. Or the first time you try it, some things won't work great but this is where you experiment and you figure out ways that things do work if they don't work in the beginning. So this is a happy, safe, playful, fun place for you to be. And you can make mistakes, you can explore, you can discover on these pages. So, um, we are going to, I'm gonna move this down if I can. Can you all, can you see here? looks so. It looks like it might be in the dark. Hold on. Can you see that better with the light shining on it? Okay, so this is kind of a wheat field. This has three colors in it. The three colors that you got in your box. So, as you can see, this has been well loved. <laughs> it's this yellow, it's blue and this really beautiful pink. 
So they're, they're derivatives of the primary colors on the color wheel. So a red, yellow, and blue. You know, this has got a lot of blue in it. It's, it's um, like, I mean, it's pinky. So it's got some blue in it, almost like, yeah, it's not a pure red. So there's been blue added to that to make it toward the purple side. And obviously it's not purple, but it's toward that side. Okay, and this is a pretty, it's a, some white has been added to it, but it's a pretty saturated blue. Anyway, those are the three colors that I've used to create this. And I've been, you know, exploring with some different ways to use these chalks. So the fun thing about it is, I'm gonna go ahead and start on this blank page is that they really blend well together. You can, I mean, we've got almost three primary colors. We've got like, we can pretty much make the whole color wheel with these three colors. I mean, generally. Yeah, I mean, every color is born out of those three saturated primary colors. And you know, when this gets low, I like to use the side of these, unless I'm getting real precise. But for this situation, I wanna use the side because it's I'm just gonna cover this whole thing up in yellow. And it uh, goes further, covers more surface area when you, we can peel the paper off. Okay, so I've got that whole yellow going on. It is messy, which is a great thing, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, these two make a great green. So yellow and blue make green, right? So I'm just gonna kinda cover one third of this and make it green. See how well these blend together? They just really, blend nicely. I'm going to try to make that line pretty straight. Oh, I love that color. It's kind of an aqua green, which I really love this color, but I want it to be more the green my daughter's favorite color is right now. It's like this pea green. So I'm just going to take the yellow and go back over the blue so that it appears more on the green side rather than the blue side. And you can control that to some degree. Make your artistic decisions however you wanna do that. All right, so I'm really satisfied with this green here. Okay. All right, and then if you've ever noticed the sunset, um, if you, when you've noticed the sunset. One thing I've noticed about it, as the sun sinks lower in the sky and disappears beyond the horizon line, that horizon line is super dark right at the horizon line and then it gradates and then it's still light up here at the top. So, and because I wanna do these, uh, the wheat fields, uh, I'm gonna do the wheat in yellow. So yellow's complement is purple. So I wanna create a, pur a dark purple right here where that yellow is gonna stick up so there's a lot of contrast. I hope that makes sense. So I want the sky to be darkest right here and then I'm gonna sort of gradate it up and it'll turn blue. So I'm gonna start with and this is experimentation. I'm, I, I'm not a great, like, <laughs> this is all new for me in terms of live video stuff. So I don't know how this is going to turn out, guys, <laughs> quite frankly. So this is just an, ex an experiment, which is what I am all about because um, you can't learn unless you try. And you really can't learn if you haven't done something and it hasn't worked out. 
sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes something becomes a mistake that ends up being a happy mistake and you learn something new and you learn something different. So this is what I'm going, I, I don't really care about the finished product. It's not like a painting that somebody's commissioning me. This is more play. This is more, I want to see what happens when I put this color next to this color on this medium on this ground. And I'm just wanting to notice myself as being curious. That's what we're getting at. So I'm just, I'm going to keep layering these colors until I get what I'm after. And I really want this purple, you know that twilight, that purple twilight, that's what I'm trying to get to. So, I don't know, we'll see. It's kind of going that way, yeah. And I put the yellow as a ground just because that sunlight, that sunlight is still impacting the colors that we see in the sky. So it's gotta be there, you know? Okay. And then we'll continue to just keep gradating here in the sky. Whatever's happening, I really like that color. So if you're not like if you're not really sure what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the boxes. So I wrote a book called Waking Up Gray and it is all about recovering your creativity. We all have stories about how we've lost our creativity. We were told we couldn't sing in the fifth grade choir. We a parent told us that you know that drawing sucked or you know, um, drawing's not appropriate, it doesn't make money, it's not stop wasting your time on frivolous things. Whatever messages we got as kids around creativity, we have to kind of reprogram our brains, reimagine as my friend talks to me about um, just reimagining creativity. Anyway, this is my book called Waking Up Cry. And it's the whole process of reimagining my own creativity, reimagining your own creativity. You have it. You may be disconnected with it. You may be connected with it. We're all in, in varying places. But we all possess some, some weight of creativity. Some endowment has been given to everybody. So uh, Waking Up Gray is an exploration of that. It's a kindness. It's a, I'm going to be kind to myself as I explore. I mean, that happened to me. My last art class was in seventh grade. And I remember, I remember my seventh grade art class. We, I remember every project we did. I remember the students. I remember the teacher, Mr. McBride. I loved every minute of it. I'm not sure why. I didn't take more art classes, but I didn't. And it wasn't until I had my fourth child and feeling like I was creative, but feeling like it was disappearing behind all of the hats I was wearing, behind my motherhood, behind being a wife, a mother, being a caretaker. Um, all the things that I was doing, I felt like it was lifting and I didn't want it to. So I took a drawing class, the local rec center, and I found out that I could draw. Literally, the last time I tried to draw was in seventh grade. That was my last go at it. And it wasn't bad. I don't remember having any experiences where it shut me down. Um, I just circled back around to it, found out I could draw. I went back to college, got my art degree. I had a lot of shame around my first go at college. It was, it was a disaster. 
honestly. And when I thought about going back to school, I was really, I was in a different place. I really wanted to learn. I wanted to be there to learn. I wanted to be there for the process. And so I felt ready. And so I returned, it took seven years, raising a family. I got my art degree in 2013 and now I'm a painter. And now it's one of my most favorite things is to help people unlock theirs because I was like 35 when I found out I had some creativity I didn't know I possessed. Um, you know, I found it a little later in life, so it's never too late. And uh, so then I wrote a book about it. Um, it's called Waking Up Gray, and I found out that people were really, really hungry for that kind of exploration. So I wrote a book about it. I, oh, I wanna show you this too. Um, so you can take these little guys and I've got a, I'm gonna take this pink and I've got this X-Acto knife and I've got this little tray here. You know what, I use meat trays. You know, when you buy meat at the market, you can reuse those meat trays for painting palettes and I do that all the time. But here I have this little bot palette. I'm just gonna take the X-Acto knife. Oh, you can't see that. Take the X-Acto knife and just scrape off some of the powder into one of those little, little craters. And I am going to, well, hold on. So you can do that right onto the paper and it makes these, so let's say, um, it makes these little, like it, they look like wildflowers. And you can go crazy. You can just kind of mist it on there or you can really lop it on there. But it's so pretty. Look at that color against the pea green. It's just beautiful. The pigments in these are just really rich, really saturated. That's what I love about these Rembrandts. If you don't have Rembrandts and you have other pastels, use those in the same way. They'll be just fine. These are a little bit higher end in terms of price. They're made in the Netherlands, I believe. Anyway, I'm just gonna kinda do that and then maybe a little bit of yellow in there. Because in a wheat field, if you really look at it, gosh, there's so many colors going on. The way the shadows hit, you're gonna have a lot of purple in there in the shadows. So anytime you have one color, you're gonna have its complement in the shadows. So if you look at a, you know, a tree that's like in its fullness in the summertime, let's say it's got a lot of green leaves. If you look at the shadow, there's gonna be some red in the shadows. And then to just kind of hold that in place, this is a strip of glassine paper. This came in the box that you got last month. And you can take the back of a spoon or just to kind of compress it or burnish it, what we say in the art world. But it's just gonna, so there's a thing on paper, it's called tooth. It's the fibers of the paper and how how they lay. It's called tooth, and it's the way that the paper, so there's ridges and valleys, like there's valleys and mountains on a paper. And so however your medium is received on that paper is what makes its tooth. Um, 
so this is mixed media, so it's going to have like wider ridges and valleys. Um, but this is going to help kind of burnish it into the surface of the paper. And also, it's great to get some workable fixative. If this is a medium that you find that you enjoy working in and want to continue working in, um, if you don't have workable fixative, Garnier works. Just a uh, hairspray, okay? So I'm just gonna mist it with a little bit of hairspray and it works as a fixative. It's a workable fixative. So it fixes the chemical, you know, the particles onto the paper, but you can still add layers over top is what is meant by a workable fixative. Okay. So there, I'll, I'll wait for that to dry. And then I, I wanted to show you something else. So I've got a little dish of vodka. <laughs> it's just, um, if you can find any alcohol, uh, preferably a white alcohol, like gin, vodka. I've used triple sec, whatever you have, that's a clear alcohol. And then you can, so earlier, I scraped off some of this powder from one of the sticks. And you just dip your brush, just a simple paintbrush, dip it in the vodka, and then dip it in the powder, and you've got paint. So if you wanted to paint with this, you can paint with it as well. And that's super duper fun. And you can make it, the more alcohol you put into it, the more translucent it's gonna be. Um, the less alcohol, the more opaque it's gonna be. Um, but you can see I'm just, just painting with it. So if I went after this dried, if I went back over this with some blue, it would really create a beautiful purple for me, which is really what I want here at the horizon line. And as you'll see with these, man, it, they're just amazing for blending. You can blend these colors with your fingers especially if you still see some white on the page. Um, your finger rubbing it into the tooth of the paper is just gonna get lost in those, those valleys that I was talking about as you blend. Okay, so if I did that with the blue, then I would get some really good purple. Oh, here we go. Some blue. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, so if you subscribe to my box, if you go, if you do a search on um, Facebook and search Waking Up Gray subscription box, I do have a Waking Up Gray page. It's not the same as the subscription box. So only the subscription box subscribers can get on that page. You have to request it and I'll let you in. But if you go to that and you're subscribed to the box, join the group and um, things like this will be posted on there um, that you know correspond with your box so that um, we understand how we, how we can use the box. And then there's this whole creative community that's waking up in just different ways. You'll be amazed to hear stories of people um, just coming into touch with creativity. That's all it's about. That's what it's all about. 
All right, so let's see, we get up to, so I wanna start doing, so if you see this, I'm just kind of recreating this. So this is a wheat field, at least for me, it's a wheat field, you can do whatever you want, but in the horizon, I just really want these to come up. I really need to wait until that dries. But the fun thing about it is, these little powdered things that we did earlier, they're fixed, but they're still workable. They're not gonna stay. Um, and so the fun thing is they will get caught up in these mark making that I'm doing, which is really fun. So I'm just creating this wheat field. Or you can do, you know, it'd be really fun as a poppy seed, a poppy field, or you know, whatever you want to do. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing this to show you some techniques to use these amazing chalk sticks. I really want to blend this line. So if you look at the sky, there's always seems to be a gradation. Um, things happen gradually. See, you just kind of keep building layer on top of layer on top of layer. sure if you're kind of intrigued by this idea of coming alive maybe waking up to your creativity but you don't know what what this is really I will say that um, there is a spiritual component to waking up to being creative uh, and we talk a lot about that and um, there is sort of an inward interior movement in it. Uh, hey, Gil, <laughs> I see you. Blessings to you. I'm just kind of showing what's in the box. Um, so yeah, so there's definitely a spiritual component to it. There's also an inward interior component to it. Um, you know, in order for any change to occur, we need to look inwardly and see where have I been fearful. A lot of times fear keeps us from a, a creative exploration, especially if there's been wounds there, especially if you've been told, given certain messages about your ability to create. Those are very, very powerful. And so we go in and dismantle some of those beliefs that were have been you know early on that we get those messages so they're really hard really hard to not believe um so there is that space where we go in and dismantle some lies replace them with truth um so then i'm just gonna go in and put some details I don't know if you can see this very well. <laughs> Just kind of making little little V's. I really want I really want this horizon line to pop. That yellow against the purple.
this going in. And now what's really fun is that in a wheat field, there are shadows. So this is all really, really light, except for those little pieces of powder in there. So I can always go in and create more shadow. Use the other end of this. In the same shapes that I'm creating the highlights. Just keep keep working on this I can get lost in this it becomes a an inner dialogue it becomes a conversation that is something we are not alone when we create we're just not alone we think we're alone even if we're alone in a room um, It's a larger story. Yeah, and then if you want to get like real, let me turn the page here. If you want to get more uh, detail, so there's this thing I did a little while ago. It's a, um, I used a stencil, these uh, quadrifoils that you see in Europe in a lot of places. Um, you can go in, the nice thing about creating paint from these pastels is that you can control the amount of um, you know, opacity, so you could make them really, really opaque, or you could make them very translucent, which is super fun. So I've, I've got this design already, and there's a gel medium that I treated the stencil with. So it's almost raised just a little bit, and it makes the surface a little bit more conducive for painting on. So again, I'm going to take one of these, it's a different color, um, and just scrape a little bit of the powder off into one of these craters. And then I'm going to take my vodka, my paintbrush, and mix a little bit of the vodka with the paint particles and then you have now this is pretty I could add more vodka to this there's just a tiny little bit of it so it's going to be more opaque but if I add more vodka and I love this and in my work a lot you'll see that you can really see down through layers because I love for viewers to investigate and find something underneath that top layer and that's one of the ways I create that appearance. It's kind of more dreamy, ethereal looking if it's a little bit more uh, translucent. And I'm just going to go in and paint this. See how you can see down through? It changes the color but doesn't change what you see down below. It's 
kind of like telling a story, you know, you have layers and layers. You're telling a story with the paint each layer that you put on. And doing it like this, the layers don't get forgotten. Yeah, and you can just, you can be a little more precise this way about what you want to paint. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap up for today. I just wanna leave you with a thought. I wanna leave you with just a thought if you go about your day. Um, I think we live in a mindset a lot of times where we think that things are scarce. Um, love is scarce, resources are scarce, goodness is scarce. Um, so it leaves us groping and grappling and trying to find what we need in sort of a desperation sort of thing. But I want to challenge that thinking um, that there is abundance all around. Creativity is abundant. It is how this world is tied together. It's how it was made. It's how it was formed. It, it's diverse. It is beautiful and it is abundant in creativity. So I want you to think, I'm gonna give an example. Just think as you move today in your world um, and scan it, scan your world for ways that beauty comes to you, for ways that creativity makes its way to you. I think we're so unaware of how that happens and it just happens all the time. So yesterday I was feeling really discouraged about, uh, about a few different things. I'm in a lot of transition and things are really hard right now and I was feeling very discouraged. And um, my daughter texted me in the middle of that discouragement. She's like, hey, I'm in your driveway. I'm here to drop off your magazine. So my daughter who is um, in college, she started, co-founded, co-created uh, in a campus magazine um, that has to do with fashion in a way that cares for people. And they just released their first issue and she came by to drop off the first issue to me. And I have to show it to you because it's absolutely beautiful. Here's the cover of it. Um, it's called Strike and it's, you can find them at Strike Magazine Chat, short for Chattanooga, two Ts, Strike Magazine Chat on Instagram. But it, it addresses issues of, of self-image, creativity, um, uh, and that's actually my daughter right there. She's in that photograph, so she not only co-directed it, co-created it, um, she's actually on the pages of it as well. Um, that's her right there. Can you see that? It's just a beautiful, just a beautiful magazine. I was so touched and it's just incredibly creative and beautiful. And she swung by, she lives in Chattanooga, so <laughs> she just, Drop my copy off and I was so glad to get that on a day that just felt so redundant and like I'm just doing everything over again and it doesn't feel like it has tons of purpose and I'm seeing people live out their creative purpose and it's just beautiful. So then I went to work. I work at a local Irish pub and one of my, one of my regulars came in and brought me these. Can you see this? This is like a shit ton of lavender. Lavender. It's like just a huge amount of lavender. And I wish you could smell it because it smells amazing. And he just grew that. Like, he knows I love lavender and he clipped it out of his garden and he 
brought them to me. And so yesterday, when I came home from work, I just started to scan and take inventory and realized, oh my gosh, I have been deeply touched today by the creativity of others. And Gil, if you're still there, Gil is always bringing me these amazing gifts for me to make art with. I have this beautiful copper wire now that's gonna show up on my copper trees on canvas, thanks to Gil and his uh, extra inventory of copper wire. I, I think they're used for wiring like electrical and stuff, but I'm gonna use them on my trees and I'm so excited about that. It's, it's things like that that continually remind me how generative creativity is and how uh, we need it. I need it, I need to be it. And I also need your creativity to feed me and nourish me. What you have creatively, we need. And I'm committed to helping you get that out. First for yourself, get it out onto the page. If you're worried about somebody seeing it, don't worry about it. Get it out onto the page and nobody has to see it, but you're, you're creating and that's what you're wired and meant as a human to do and to participate in and we need it and you need it. So I am just encouraging you today to scan your world and find places that you've been touched by creativity, by ways that it has changed your life and has nourished you, fed you, um, brought beauty before your eyes. Look for it, it's there. So I am going to leave you all now and um, Thanks for tuning in. This was so fun. And thanks for being patient with me because I'm learning as I go. So thank you. Take care, everybody.